This week on Live Action News Now, did you see the debate? Follow your heart, but you have to get elected also. They will take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. 51 years, that was the law. 51 years, Constance's scholarship said it was the right way to go. Plus, Khloe Kardashian offers her brother's sperm to a friend without his permission? And finally, a micro preemie born at 24 weeks goes home. Live Action Nation, let's go. Hello and welcome to Live Action News Now. I'm your host, Juan Garcia. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any updates. I'm going to just ask Rob to give you some sperm. I mean, he's a good catch. Hello? Hi, baby. Hey. Um, I'm with Malika. Hey. Hey. Hey, Rob. Hey. Real serious question, though. Like, Bible serious. Malika wants to have another kid. Hey. Hey. And... She was going to go to a sperm bank to get sperm, but I just said, why not get it from I you? Can't anymore. What? Is it broke? Reality TV star Khloe Kardashian recently offered up her brother Rob to serve as a sperm donor for her friend Malika in a recent episode of The Kardashians, despite her own negative experience with artificial reproductive technology. On a surprise phone call, Rob responded that he couldn't physically do so, but Chloe continued to insist, which is surprising considering how candid Chloe herself has been about her own struggles with art and surrogacy. Last year, she described the process as transactional, and she said she struggled to form a bond with her son Tatum afterwards. So not sure how real or scripted the entire exchange was, it appears that they were going for a few laughs, but let's just think about the moral subtext here. This kind of thinking leads to a culture where sex is separate from marriage and separate from love and from parenting, and all those things should be integrated. It's a cheapening of human life and promotes a designer baby mentality. Now this, Joe Biden and Donald Trump sparred over abortion in their first debate ahead of the 2024 election. As president, would you block abortion medication? First of all, the Supreme Court just approved the abortion pill, and I agree with their decision to have done that, and I will not block it. And if you look at this whole question that you're asking, a complex, but not really complex, 51 years ago, you had Roe v. Wade and everybody wanted to get it back to the states, everybody, without exception, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives. President Biden? It's been a terrible thing. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying, we're gonna turn civil rights back to the states, let each state have a different rule. Maybe they could just read the Constitution where the 14th Amendment forbids the states from denying to any person within his jurisdiction the equal protection of laws. You can see that video in the description. Question. Does Joe Biden or Donald Trump know how many abortions are happening in the United States every year? My bestie Carol did some digging and found this for me. There were 1,037,000 abortions for 2023, 2,841 abortions daily in the US, 118 per hour, nearly two per minute, and one in every 30 seconds. Let's put that into aviation terms. If a popular airline lost one or two plane a day, and a tenth of that number, let's say about 280 people died daily, God forbid, from a downed plane that was accidental, how long would it take for our political leaders to stop playing games and take action? And that's not even people dying from intentional killing. Or let's put it into historic terms. About 2,400 people died in Pearl Harbor, 2,500 Americans in Normandy, and nearly 3,000 people died on September 11th. Could you imagine any of those tragic moments of loss in our history happening every day for a year and our politicians not coming together to put it to an end? I mean, we react, and rightly so, in horror when a school shooting takes place, don't we? So should we take this number seriously? 2,800 babies killed intentionally on a daily basis. So sad. Also, before moving on, we should note that the reporting of the abortion data has become more difficult since overturning of Roe versus Wade two years ago. One reason being that the current administration is loosening safety standards regarding how the abortion pill may be dispensed, and tracking DIY abortions is nearly impossible. Which, by the way, now that we are two years removed from the Dobbs decision that overturned Roe, the abortion industry has been busy cranking out misinformation. We go over five of the biggest lies on our website at liveactionnews.org, but here's one. Women will die from pregnancy complications. A highly circulated story aimed at evoking sympathy was that of Kate Cox, a woman who learned during her pregnancy that her baby had trisomy 18, a condition that the media referred to as incompatible with life, when in reality, thanks to advances in medicine, people with the condition are living longer. The media claimed that Cox needed an abortion for medical reasons, namely so that she could have a different, quote, healthy baby in the future. Cox had been through two previous C-sections and was at risk of uterine rupture and loss of fertility with each of her subsequent pregnancies. She knew that risk when she became pregnant with her third child and was willing to take on those risks until her daughter was diagnosed with trisomy 18. 
Then suddenly the risk mattered, and the media convinced Americans that Cox needed an abortion. But Cox simply didn't want to take on those same risks with a child who had a disability. Well, I have some wonderful news to share. I'm actually pregnant. Um, my husband and I are expecting a little boy coming in January. So um, very, very exciting time for us now. Congratulations. Cox just announced she's pregnant again. But what she didn't say was that this pregnancy carries the same risk to her health due to her previous two C-sections. But she is willing to carry the term because this baby has so far been deemed again, quote, healthy. But the bottom line is that humans shouldn't be discriminated against due to disability or health reasons. We all know friends or family with health or disability issues and setbacks, and are they deserving of death because of it? No, we love them all the more. Yes, life can sometimes be difficult or inconvenient or not the way we'd picture it, but it doesn't rob it of its beauty. You can read about the other lies from the abortion industry on our website at liveactionnews.org. And finally, I can't begin to express how, how I feel right now. I'm, I'm just happy. <laughs> Today's a great day. A micro preemie born at 24 weeks and weighing less than two pounds was cleared to go home after 147 days in the NICU at New York University Langone Hospital. The miracle baby, Shine Graham, was supposed to be born around Mother's Day, but had to be delivered via emergency C-section on January 24th, when her mother, Phoebe Turner, began bleeding and experiencing contractions four months early. She was understandably scared because she had previously experienced a miscarriage on Mother's Day in 2022. Babies born at 24 weeks are among the youngest who can survive a premature birth, with the record currently being 21 weeks. Reflecting on the news that she would finally get to take her 10 pound healthy daughter home, Turner said with gratitude. They warned me about the things that could happen and then to see her here is just, it, it's, it's a miracle. For the latest in pro-life news, visit our website at liveactionnews.org and follow us at Live Action News on social media. That does it for today's show. I'm Juan Garcia. Thanks for watching Live Action News Now. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button so you don't miss any updates. See you next time.